Hello, and welcome to The Discriminating Gamer, the board game review show that recently saw a concert featuring 50 Cent and Nickelback. So it was more like 45 cents. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at Crypt Hunters from Warhammer. In Crypt Hunters from Warhammer, two players take on the roles of either the Stormcast Eternals as they valiantly search through the crypt for a way out, or the Chain Rasps, the evil ghosts that are attempting to stop them. Boo! There are four Stormcast Eternals, and they each have, of course, their own specific uh, advantages. Um, they've, of course, got hit points and, and, and range they can fire. Uh, you've got three humans with the big crossbows and one, one griffin dog that's pretty cool. Um, then, of course, with the Chain Rasps, you have, I believe, ten of them that can appear on the board. So the game begins with the Stormcast Eternals on kind of the central spot in the crypt. Now, they're trying to find their way out. Now every round, the first thing that happens is wherever there is line of sight, wherever there's a pathway that the Stormcast Eternals can see down, the Chain Rasp is going to go. The Chain Rasp player is going to go ahead and take some tiles and fit them to make them make sense around where they are going. Then the uh, Stormcast Eternals activate. Now they uh, have so many activation points; they can move, they can attack. Um, or the basic things they're going to do. They're also going to have cards that they can play that can give them special advantages or maybe kind of limit the chain rasps in some way or help them out generally. Now after the Stormcast Eternals have moved, any part of the crypt that is no longer within line of sight of any of the Stormcast Eternals is removed from the game. So the board is going to kind of evolve as you are moving. Next, after they have been taken away, you're going to have the Chain Rasps spawn. Essentially, they're going to spawn at the end of every hallway, every unconnected hallway. They're going to go ahead and appear. There may also be certain tiles that lay out where they are going to appear from as well. Next, they are going to activate. The Chain Rasps are going to uh, move to attack the Stormcast Eternals, and they are going to try to fight them in order to uh, deal damage to them. Now, during the attack action for the Stormcast Eternals, they're rolling the die. If they get the Lightning Bolt symbol, then they uh, essentially will kill the, the Chain Rasp. When the Chain Rasps attack, they're going to go ahead and look for the Skull symbol. And when they do that, they deal damage to the... Uh, uh, Stormcast Eternal, who puts a wound token on his player card. So the Stormcast Eternals, they are searching through this uh, crypt, this maze. They're trying to find a winch that can, they can then use to lever themselves out of the uh, final uh, tunnel, uh, the final platform. But if the Stormcast Eternals can get the winch, get to the right location, and at least one can pull themselves out of the uh, crypt, then that player wins the game. However, if the Chain Rasps succeed in destroying all the Stormcast Eternals before they can escape, then they win Crypt Hunters. So the basic idea here is you've got the Stormcast Eternals who are very powerful, but they're limited. There's only four of them. And then you've got the Chain Rasps who, there are many of them, but they're they're weaker. And that's kind of reflected in the die. I think there's, there's, I think there's more hits on the die for the um, for the Stormcast Eternals than there are for the uh, Chain Rasps, but the Chain Rasps are going to get more chances to, <clears throat> to attack them. So there's there's that aspect of the game. Is there's there's really this this, you know, one side's got the power, the other side's got the numbers. Now what's interesting here is that evolving board as you're moving, as as you're placing new tiles and then removing tiles. So you can actually kind of double back, and it's a completely different part of the crypt. And that's really cool, and that's really eerie. There is a real claustrophobic sense um, in this game playing those those uh, uh, Eternals when you're trying to make it through and you're like, I, I just got to move another space. You can't hunker down in this game and just try to fight it out because you won't get anywhere. You've got to keep moving. You've got to get through the 
the game. You've, you've, you've got to keep evolving that, that uh, crypt. And it's really interesting how this plays out and the different tiles that come out. Some of them have booby traps in them that can cause problems. Like I say, some of them have spawn points for, for the chain rasps. Um, and, and, and so there's a lot of interesting things. And then the cards are pretty interesting too with some of the effects that, that they can have. And then of course each Stormcast Eternal has their own special advantage. And then of course you have the Dread Warden who comes out who's even a little bit more powerful. Uh, what's cool because the, the, the chain rasps can also drift. They can just kind of keep moving along line of sight and then pick up and carry other guys with them too. So they've got some advantages there too in movement. It's it's a very interesting dungeon crawler. I don't think I've seen one quite like this. Um, and, and, and generally I really like that aspect of, of building the dungeon. I think it's pretty cool. My, my big complaint is, it's kind of my complaint with, with, with all of the, the Warhammer games. I generally like them. Um, I don't like putting them together. I, it's just kind of a pain for me. I'm not that good. I, again, I was always the kid in kindergarten who used way too much glue for projects. So I'm not a big fan of that aspect of the game, of putting it together. But I know there are a lot of people that are, and they enjoy painting it, and, I, and so I get it. But it's just not my thing. But the game is the thing, right? And the game here is fun. I enjoyed this game. Um, I don't know that I loved it, but I had fun with it. I'd play it again. Um, it was, like I say, it was, for me, what made this game was it was genuinely creepy. There was a genuinely creepy claustrophobic atmosphere here that really came through. And the game itself is actually a pretty simple, straightforward game, but the theme is so strong and it's so much fun. Uh, I, I really enjoyed it. So recommendation for the discriminating gamers, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to say buy it. Uh, if you like a good creepy atmosphere in a game, I think you'll get a kick out of this one. Thank you once again for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube, on BoardGameGeek, on our Facebook page, or on TheDiscriminatingGamer.com. We ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. We are The Discriminating Gamer. And i got to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I recently just ordered a chicken and an egg online, and I'll let you know. Please somebody help me on my feet again, and I don't know where I'm going. Guys, I can't play. Is there a problem? Yeah, with my wife, that old bat. You guys have fun without me. I'm gonna pay for that.